they're, they're illegitimate. Uh, this deception goes even deeper when it comes to the courts that we attend. When showing up the court, you will notice that there are seats for witnesses behind a wooden fence or barrier. The defendant must cross through the entrance to the other side of the barrier where the plaintiff and judge sit. This act symbolizes the boarding of a ship. At this time, business can be conducted in maritime admiralty law. The judge, acting as captain or banker, is responsible for settling the balance between the two sides. This is why there is always a monetary value involved in any court case. The captain is simply dealing with banking and merchant disputes. Once the balance is paid, the case is closed. To turn the court case away from admiralty law where your rights are not protected, you must avoid agreeing to represent the artificial person. This is done by stating that you are the natural person. You don't have a first or last name because those imply corporate title. In a court case, you may state that the court takes judicial notice of your honor's oath of office. Every judge must take an oath of office to practice law, yet you must make it clear to the court and the jury that the judge is acting as judge and not banker. Remember that you are a natural human being of the earth. You are not governed by anything but your own consciousness. Laws are created within a society. The society that created the laws we see being enforced today is called the Law Society. Yet the most beautiful part of this entire deception is the fact that we are not part of the Law Society, so their laws do not apply to us. Judges, lawyers, and law enforcement officers, they're all part of a society. Within that society, they've created their own language that's deceptively similar to English. They have these little things called statutes, acts, and regulations that seem like laws but they really only apply to those within their society. So that basically means all the traffic violations, minimum age requirements, and everything except for damage to another person or their property doesn't really apply to the natural person. Laws only apply to those within the law society. The game being played is an illusion. You can simply choose to open your eyes and reclaim the freedom that you were born with bound by nothing but the limits of your imagination. These are just a few examples of assuring that your rights are being protected. By far, the most important line of defense against this deception is to be aware of the perversion of language and be absolutely aware of how you form your beliefs and concepts. I heard that people who claim the free man status in common law jurisdiction and courts have been ordered by a judge to have a psychiatric assessment. Is this another way for the agents and their principals to cloud and smoke the public away from seeing and learning the truth in this process of freedom? What's your thoughts on this? Yes, even even a psychiatry is one of their mm. wild card weapons. It's a joker for them because you know you go back into society and or your community with that label of. You know, oh, you, you know, there's a question about your sanity. Ooh, then it's then it's totally in fiction realm again. Yeah. There's nothing you can yeah. say or defend yourself. Well, and that, and I've got fact, it. there is that there, there is because um, first and foremost, you need to ask them under what model are they practicing? Well, it's a medical model, and okay, then you need to ask them. Okay, what view, world view does this that model come from? It comes from a Western model. And if you're from another culture, then you actually say, okay, so when we enter into shared space, how does that worldview fit with mine? Mm. Yeah, see, that's, that, that's, there's, there is a lot of ways to do yeah. it. I'm, technically, like, it's easy to deal with those psychiatrists, and the best yeah. way to deal with them is you yeah, ask those questions, yes. uh, not, to, not to tell them any of your personal history, because right. your information in your life is private. Yes. Did you guys see that e-book I wrote on it? Yeah, I've, I've, yet. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've published a, an ebook on it. It's free. It's free to download on the internet about that psychiatric uh, wildcard and, and how I overcame it. So there's some tools in there. Um, awesome. Is there a website people can go to as well that you've set up? Yeah, if you get the powerback. Power awesome. Yeah, and that's so that's with the psychiatric stuff in there. I mean, I had to go to huge links, but uh, hopefully that helps some people out. There's also uh, the brand winner criteria which is what they're looking at interruptibility rationale that it actually sets out what they're looking for so if you're in that situation pull down that list and mm -hmm. just say let's speak directly to these things okay mm -hmm. interrupt me <laughs> you know do this do this you know awesome. and out you go 
Okay, so what is the lawful remedy you see? Is there anything left in that area we need to talk about? Yeah, um, obviously knowledge is the big weakness. Knowledge and the other one is vision because not enough people uh, hold, a, hold a firm vision of, of society structured you know, as whānau hapu. That, that's when they act in fear. That's to defend the system, the very system that's killing them and killing us. Um, so we need to address the... Um, like common law is dependent upon common knowledge, so we need to address that. Um, and I believe refusal to acknowledge the all caps name, um, and we have to question the authority. It's proven illegitimate, so get some support up um, behind you, you know, and question and, and challenge them and dismiss your own case. Um, and then, uh, yeah, getting in touch with our heart, which is which is actually where the law stems from. You don't need don't need to spend the you know thousand dollars that I spend on law dictionaries and the thousands of hours or whatever else. You know, studying it. All you have to do is really just get in touch with the heart because that's where the law comes from. Yeah, exactly. So, how do you think we can best uphold law in common? Yeah. Well, my case again, they blocked private prosecutions, which means the crown has uh, now abandoned. Uh, natural justice. Natural justice means that anyone, every case has a has a right to be heard. So because they're now blatantly only hearing their cases and and just railroading people through that, it defaults to customary law, mm. which is uh, which is kawa tikanga, but utu muru, and and so the way for us to do that, like you could do that as an individual or as a as a as a as a man, you could go and and. Uh, abate a nuisance, which means, hey, I was about to see um, someone tip a 20,000 litres of poison into the river upstream. I could go there, break down the gate, disable the equipment. You know, I didn't need any court order, didn't need to call anyone. As long as I didn't turn it to my economic advantage, that was lawful. Mm. Okay, the problem with that is, hey, I'm, I'm out there by myself and I'm going to get you know, slammed, right, <laughs> by the system. So go to... Uh, uh, whānau hapu or popular local decisions pull you know say hey this is this is about to happen there's poison that's about to be put put upstream or ge that's being planted in our neighborhood or let's take a preventative step and agree that we don't want ge to come in here and you yeah. do that and then when 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 individuals see the threats come in or someone planting ge whoever can go in there and abate the nuisance which is remove the threat uh, remove it from happening and they're protected by the community. Now, if you remember that the, um, the their law is, is based on, um, or their legal limits, is just based on community perceptions. If you've already got the community buy-in for this, it's legal. Mm. It's lawful. You're covered. Excellent. So what are our biggest threats to security? You know, I had a particularly rough time with Crown Loyal Immigrants, you know, and uh, uh, they're nasty in, the, in that mindset. Yes, they're of our family. We need to reach them and say, "Hey, mate, you, you you're part of the human family here, and you're being a bit of a human lemming, you know, mm-hmm. saying you're a no robot." Rights. Yeah, exactly, you know. And it's your choice if you want to jump <clears throat> off that cliff with no human rights and you know prejudicial, you know everything else. But don't go dragging. Don't expect me to come with you, and so let go of me, you know. Let go of let go of those around you, or come back mm-hmm. to us. So crown immigrants, you know, we're being flooded with crown immigrants right now, and and uh, we need to actually find a way to protect our communities, our whānau hapu, from that. There's a way to do that with community currencies. You know, if they set up their own currency and someone that was moving into the area had to have some of that currency, then they'd have to trade with someone in that area. That's a good way to do um, local uh, immigration control. Or you, you've set your local local uh, laws and you, and you notify everyone that comes in. You say, this is the way that we work here. You know, it's tikanga. It's common law. You don't come in here and think that you can do a job stomping on people day in day out like the registrar at Kaitaia there who you know docu- doctored my documents and all of that kind of stuff and don't think you can do that nine to five and then come back to our community and uh, and and think that you can make an economic gain because mm. we'll find a way for the economic gain that you have misappropriated to go to those whānau that you've affected you know and the other one is food security we, we have a huge opportunity, our biggest opportunity in, in our lands to follow through with our, or follow up on our nuclear free with our GE free, and it's really under threat right now. The government's, uh, with the Crown, is pushing these trials and, and 
no labeling and all of this kind of stuff. And once it's out of the bag, that's it. You know, like it's done. We, we've lost it. We, so we and and because because they're pushing it, it's not this is not an election issue. This is something that is now the defaults to uh, Fano Hapu community action to block the entry and remove any GE that's come that's come into that environment. So that's a huge threat. You know, we know that there's intellectual property stuff to do with it, Terminator seeds, human health. Yes, Monsanto. Monsanto. Right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, environmental. Uh, Get ready. Yeah, oh, mate. Again, it's sad to have to say this, but our ancestors, our Tupuna, worked this out long, a long time ago. You, you, it's better to, um, to defend your rights than to try and right the wrong. <laughs> you know, that's why we'd stand up in, in front and, and, you know, hey, are you a foe or an, an enemy? You come in peace or not? If you don't come yeah. in peace, we fight straight away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you we actually peace, need to... up in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to, yeah, we need to block uh, these these things from happening and not to seek... elementarius. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. what well, it actually highlights is that, is that there needs to be a re-educating of our people. Or educating the crap that's been educated into them, out of them. All roads are, are pointing one way at, at this time, and every avenue that we have to go the other way, we need to we need to do. And uh, uh, recognizing that uh, you're different from me, and that's the way nature is, and that's great. You do what you 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 feel called to do, you know. And we and we apply the lessons from the past, which is if a, if it's something that relates to you, I have to come and speak with you, and we work it out together. If it exactly. affects the whole manner of the of the uh, community or the hapu or that you know within the rohe then we work that out together and it's about working together and shared space collaborating eh yeah it is and and at the same time there are the warriors amongst us and uh, and and those people that will feel feel called to go and uh, like the scion um uh, ge tree trial in Rotorua, someone went and un- climbed under the fence grabbed a, a spade and and um killed some of the trees right Mm. That's a that's an act of a warrior, and mm. and we need those in society. We actually do need those because while we're waiting for the people to um, to realise that we can work things out locally, you know, especially while we've got all these cr- people that think that they're crown immigrants, not part of the human family, <laughs> you know, uh, we need those warriors, those people that uh, that will take the initiative, and uh, and will protect our future generations and even our own skins. I mean, I don't want to be eating. Uh, this GE food that you know kills my mind and you know whatever exactly. else. Exactly. So, what solutions do you have in mind? Well, I've come up with one that I believe uh, touches on all of those things. It's it's creating a living food bank, which right. people will be able to uh, join either as a uh, someone that takes some of their money from the bank, which is going to steal it anyway, <laughs> and is depreciating by the day, and puts it into a living food bank through this network. And what it does is it, it, they, they can say, well, it's got to be GE-free, it's got to be um, organic, right? Well, let's say those two things. And um, and it's set at the food, at the, today's prices of food. So this uh, network, live, the Living Food Bank, will group that money and then offer it to communities. We'll say, hold it out as a carrot and say, look, if you can get organized as a community and, um, and agree that you're going to be GE-free and agree that you're going to be organic... And say that you can you can grow this food. We're going to give you this money, right? It's like pre-buying the potatoes. Right? So it, it gives them the the resource and the to be able to buy the equipment and uh, and and pay for the wages or whatever else, pay for the pay for the um, sustenance of the workers to be able to uh, increase the seed stock, right? Mm. And when the person who needs the money um, says a season in advance or needs the food says a season in advance, okay, I'm going to take my uh, order of potatoes uh, this this season, it gives those person those, those people heads up to be able to grow that extra, you know. So right. instead of just having these seed banks that are like, you know, try and keep the seeds good and, you know, just enough for me and whatever else, and instead of driving down these communities and seeing all these, you know, small, square, rectangular, fenced-off, unutilised beautiful pieces of land with soil and water you know mm. what you could we can transcend that crown title system and and give people the the real um the the pathway to this whanau hapu collective existence 